Hi guys, today I'm making delicious and summery vegan party appropriate food and a fruity fresh kombucha drink to go with it. While I know it's not always possible for us to gather at the moment, summer is still the time when a lot of parties and get togethers happen and for this I think we need some good food and you can never have too many ideas for this types of food I think. So I've put together three sort of snacky style dishes that you can serve at your next garden party or just summer get together and today I'm making some antipasti skewers, a very Swedish take on nachos with potatoes as the base and some fresh and spicy kimchi lettuce cups. To put icing on the cake I'm also going to show you how to make a non-alcoholic version of a Pim's cup using kombucha. So I've got lots of good stuff coming your way but before we get into that I want to thank Nordgren for sponsoring this video. Nordgren is a Danish watch brand with a sustainability focus and they make timeless and classy looking pieces that last a long time. Something that I've personally really liked about Nordgren is that they have so many strap options for vegans. They have vegan leather straps, mesh straps, nylon straps and link straps so there's lots to choose from making it easy to customize your watch to go with different looks. And at the moment Nordgren are running a Father's Day campaign because I know they celebrated earlier this month in Denmark and actually today I know that you're celebrating in the UK and the US and maybe other places around the world as well. So uh, happy Father's Day to any dads watching. If you haven't got the dad you'd like to celebrate a gift already, I'd happily recommend a Nordgren piece. And personally, I really like my philosopher and I usually wear it with a gold mesh strap. But another idea could be Nordgren's Chronograph Pioneer Watch, which has quite a masculine look to it and embodies the classic purpose of a chronograph watch. The functions are kept simple, enabling the user to switch effortlessly between the stopwatch and standard timekeeping functions. I also appreciate that Nordgren works with NGOs in their giving back program so that some of the profits from each sale go to a good cause and they also ensure good working conditions and fair pay in their factories as well. Of course I've got a discount code for you that either will give you 15% off your whole order or a free strap to go with any watch. If you want to learn more about Nordgren you can find a link to their website down in the description box but now let's get to cooking shall we? And the first thing we're gonna make are the antipasti skewers because I thought we'd go for the easiest first and I really love these because who doesn't like antipasti and it's a really great idea to serve them on skewers because it saves everyone from poking around in bowls and you can just grab one and munch away. So first off we need to gather all our antipasti ingredients so that it's easy for us to put together the skewers. For my skewers I'm going to be using some cherry tomatoes as well as some fresh basil leaves and green olives as well. And none of these really need any prep work but I'm also going to add some melon cubes to the mix. So first I remove the seeds from a quarter of a small cantaloupe and I peel it using a knife. Then I cut the melon into 8 bite sized pieces, one for each skewer. So about the skewers, I'm using these bamboo skewers that I usually use for barbecuing and they're quite long so what I like to do is take a pair of scissors and just cut them in two. And this makes shorter skewers that are good for single servings but if you have reusable skewers that are long of course you can just make longer skewers it just means you have to make less of them. But for now I set the skewers aside and finish prepping the other components and I'm using larger pieces of marinated artichoke so I'm going to just cut them into two pieces by slicing through the thicker side. I'm also slicing the two slices of vegan cold cuts that I have chosen into four even slices so that in total I have eight, one for each skewer again. And you can really use any vegan cold cuts that you like the taste of. So in general you could really use any kind of vegan antipasti, cold cuts, fruits that you like here. If there's something I'm using that you don't like swap it for something else. For example you could use sun dried tomato or some cornichons and you can also vary these to uh, go with the season depending on where you're at but of course these are summer ones. So finally let's assemble the skewers and you can really do this in any way you wish but make sure that each skewer has the same amount of each component though so that everyone gets a good one. Also consider which foods will taste good together as you arrange them, putting these foods next to each other to encourage people to eat them together. 
For example, the melon might taste good with some basil or a piece of cold cuts, and the tomato goes really well with the basil as well. But really just have fun. This really is a creative and fun experience. I'm sure children would love to help with this as well. And I'm happy to say that they are equally fun to eat for grown-ups and kids. All right, so on to the next one. And as you all know, I'm Swedish. And here in Sweden, in a few days, there's gonna be midsummer festivities all over. And this next dish is perfect for such an event. And it's actually something that's been done quite a lot here in Sweden over the last few years. Usually then with some potato crisps as the base, but I'm going to be making them with some other roasted potatoes to make this very Swedish take on nachos that also has the taste of the sea. And I know this sounds bonkers, but trust me, it's really yummy. Well, first of all, we need to preheat the oven to 200 degrees Celsius and then slice up four medium sized potatoes into rounds and they should be roughly three to four millimeters thick. Then we place the slices on a lined oven tray and drizzle with about one tablespoon of rapeseed or olive oil and season with salt. I toss to coat and then spread them out into an even single layer. This will make sure that they bake evenly. Then I roast the potato slices in the preheated oven for roughly 20 minutes or until they are golden and cooked through. Make sure to flip them over halfway through the roasting time as well. Once the potato slices are golden, allow them to cool slightly before layering them on a serving plate. So if you prefer to have single servings, you can definitely serve this like that as well instead of this sort of plate that I'm putting together where everyone has to grab from the same plate. And to do that, I would just serve it on like a wooden board and put the potato slices, you know, with some room in between and then just add the toppings onto each potato slice. And that way people can just grab one and uh, off they go. Either way you serve it, we should finely chop a quarter of a red onion for the topping and we should also pull the smaller fronds off from about three dill stems. Then to assemble the dish, we dollop some vegan creme fraiche or sour cream all over the potatoes and I use about 100 milliliters for the whole dish. And for the topping, I'm also going to use this vegan caviar that's made from seaweed. And I can get it here in Sweden just from the supermarket and it's very affordable, but I know it's not available all over the world, but one place that you can usually find it at is Ikea. So if you have an Ikea around, you can always check in their deli section. And if you can't get a hold of this, you could make some vegan lox like a vegan smoked salmon. And I've got a recipe for this on my website, so I'll make sure to link that down below, but there are plenty of recipes um, using different methods online. So just Google it if you want to make the dish and you can't get a hold of the caviar. But otherwise, we're just gonna dollop this all over as well. Then I sprinkle the chopped red onion and the dill fronds over the plate of potatoes. Finally, I use a microplane to grate the lemon zest from about a quarter of a lemon over the top as well and finish with a sprinkling of flaked sea salt. To me, this dish is summer embodied and all the flavors that I grew up with here in Sweden. I hope you will also enjoy this very Swedish take on nachos. Next up, I'm going to be making some lettuce cups and I think this is the perfect summer snack and lettuce leaves really make such a great vessel for an array of yummy stuff. The ones I'm going to be making today will be filled with smashed avocado, kimchi, some tofu and fresh veggies and now this might sound like a lot but don't worry, it's really easy, let me show you. First we're going to be making the avocado smash and to do this you cut an avocado open, remove the pip and then use a spoon to scoop out the flesh and I scoop it into a bowl then squeeze in some lime juice for some acidity as well as to preserve the green color and I season with salt. Then I use a fork to mash the avocado into a somewhat uniform mash although feel free to keep some smaller chunks if you like that. I set the avocado smash aside and next up clean the lettuce leaves and pat them dry. Then I lay them out in a single layer on a serving board or plate so that I can fill them easily. After this, prepping the remaining lettuce cup toppings is very easy. You're just going to cut a quarter of a block of smoked tofu into roughly 24 smaller pieces. This means you have three for each lettuce cup if you're making eight. Then you're going to slice three to four radishes into thin rounds or feel free to get creative with the shapes you make. Also, I use a vegetable peeler to make some ribbons out of a quarter piece of a cucumber. And then finally, I finely sliced two small spring onions. 
To assemble the lettuce cap, simply spread some avocado smash on the bottom of the lettuce leaves and then add tofu pieces, dollops of vegan kimchi. I use about a cup's worth for eight lettuce cups. And then I top with the radish slices and cucumber ribbons and sprinkle the sliced spring onions over the lettuce cups before finishing with some toasted sesame seeds. And then voila, you have some delicious lettuce cups perfect for a garden get together or a warm summer evening at home. So now we've come to the last recipe of this video and it's going to be my non-alcoholic take on a Pim's cup and I'm going to use kombucha to make it. So when I lived in London this was such a staple in the summer. It really is such a classic British summer drink and I think it's probably the most beautiful summer drink that I can think of. And often it's served in a jug so you can feel free to double up, triple up quadruple up this recipe and serve it like that as well. But I'm going to be serving mine in glasses. And like I said, I'm going to be using kombucha as well as apple juice to make the sort of base of the drink. But you'll see it all in a moment. So let's start by preparing the fruits and vegetables that make this drink so spectacular. First, I'm going to slice some lemon and orange into thin half moon shaped slices. If you're using smaller fruits and big glasses, or if you even wanted to make this in a jug, you can of course cut circular slices instead, but for each glass we'll need about three half moon slices of each. Then I use a vegetable peeler to make some ribbons out of a piece of cucumber, and I use about five or six slices per drink. I also cut some strawberries into halves or quarters depending on their size, and about two or three per drink will be perfect. Finally, I grab a hold of a couple of shorter mint sprigs for each drink and I make sure they're nice and clean. Now to making the drink itself, I'm going to squeeze two tablespoons of fresh orange juice into a tumbler and if you wish, you can add a splash of Angostura bitters. These bitters do contain alcohol though, so if you want this drink to be strictly non-alcoholic, then you need to leave these out. What they do add is a little bit of spice to the drink, but there are other ways of doing this. For example, you could add some extra ginger juice into the drink, or I've seen people add um, brewed and then chilled tea into their non-alcoholic Pim's cup, so there's lots of stuff you can play around with, but they do taste really great without the bitters as well. After the bitters go in or not, I arrange my fruits and vegetables as well as about three to four ice cubes in the glass. And it can be really pretty to press some of them up against the sides of the glass as this will make a nice pattern when you look at it from the outside. Also, feel free to reserve a mint sprig and a strawberry for the top if you wish. Finally, I pour in 75 milliliters of good quality pressed apple juice followed by 100 milliliters of ginger kombucha into the glass and I use a chopstick or something similar to gently stir the drink around to mix everything. Finally, garnish with the remaining mint sprig and possibly a whole strawberry if you would like a more festive look. Now you've got a really summery drink to treat all your friends and family to and I'm sure it will impress them. And that's because this drink is really so summery and beautiful. I hope you guys agree with me. And what's even better is that when you've drunk it, you get to eat all the little bits that are left in the glass. And yeah, this totally brings out the child in me. And I'm also a lover of all things kombucha, so it's definitely a winner in my book. As always, I've linked all the full recipes down below if you want to see them written out. And I would like to thank you all very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and got some good ideas for your summer party parties or get-togethers and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do so and click the notifications button so that you don't miss the next video. Now I wish you all a great day, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye!